Hello, I'm here to tell you that you have an eternal soul. You can spend eternity in heaven with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or an eternity in hell with Satan. I would like to take the time to tell you why you are on your way to hell and how you can go to heaven. You need to realize the truth that you are a sinner and that you have sinned against God and are heading to, for hell. We read in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We read in Exodus 20.15, Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever stole before? Have you taken something without asking? That is a sin. Romans 3.10 reads, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. We read in Exodus 20.16, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Have you ever lied before? Have you ever been afraid of the truth, whether you were ashamed of the truth or you didn't want to hurt somebody? The Bible says lying is a sin. 1 Timothy 1.15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Are you a sinner? Exodus 20.17, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's, that is thy neighbor's. Have you ever wanted something someone else has so much that you envied them? What about adultery? Exodus 20.14, Thou shalt not commit adultery. You might say, I've never committed the physical act of adultery, but Jesus says in Matthew 5, 28, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lusteth after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Bottom line, everybody is a sinner. You are a sinner. Romans 14, 11 reads, for, the, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. Someday you will have to stand before an almighty righteous God and be judged one day because of your sins. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a cost for sinning against God. And that punishment for sinning against God is hell. We read in Matthew 25, 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you know that hell was not prepared for you and me? It was prepared for the devil and his angels? Revelation 20, 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hell is a real place. Some people might tell you that you can earn your way to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You need to realize that there is nothing you can do to earn heaven. No amount of good works will ever make up for the bad works. You cannot save yourself. Only God can save you. God made a way for you to go to heaven. That way is through Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 1 Timothy 2.5 reads, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus took on the sins of the world. He paid a price so that you would have a way to go to heaven.
Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Do you realize that Jesus was beaten and whipped because of your sins? Isaiah 50, verse 6 says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Did you know that Jesus' beard was ripped out and people were shaming him and spitting on him? Jesus went through all that because of your sins. 1 Peter 3.18 reads, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Luke 24 verse 7 reads, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Jesus was nailed to a cross, and his blood was shed so your sins can be washed away. He was killed because of your sins. And he rose again the third day, proving that he is God. Romans 5 verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Realize only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection can one's sins be forgiven. So what must you do to be saved? First, you need to be sorry for sinning against God. The Word of God calls this repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. We read in Mark chapter 2, verse 17, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God has called you to come to him and have sorrow for sinning against him. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 reads, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God does not want you to go to hell. You want to be saved from God's wrath? You have to come to God broken in repentance. He's provided a way for you to go to heaven. Second, you must believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Acts 4.12 reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. John 14.6 reads, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You must believe that Jesus is the only way that your sins can be washed away forgiven. That through Jesus is the only way for you to go to heaven. You have to believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again the third day. Next, you need to confess your repentance and belief to God in prayer. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 reads, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Prayer is simply talking with God one on one. Let him know the sorrow you have for sinning against him and that you believe what Jesus did for you on the cross. Lastly, you need to ask God to save you. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 reads, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember, when you ask for something that is 
That is showing that you do not deserve it. You have not earned it. If you have done this, you have gone from death to life. Now, after God saves you, he will give you a new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God will do what you could not do in your life. He will overcome sin and clean up your life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Psalms 119.9 reads, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Today God has given you his perfect written word, which comes to you in the King James Bible for English-speaking people. Through Jesus Christ and his perfect written word, your life will change. If you got saved today, I want to praise the Lord for you. If you have not gotten saved today, what is holding you back? Is an eternity in hell worth whatever is holding you back? Thank you for listening to this message. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I threw in that quick gospel message. Um, people might find some mistakes with it. I just wanted to make a point for this study. Uh, call it, Christmas is just because I put Christmas on there because it's, I'm putting it in the part of the series of Christmas. But the main thing is, is what's the best time of the year to preach the gospel? People are trying to use the excuse, and they'll say it's not, but they are, are trying to use the excuse that it's okay to celebrate Easter because, and try to do the Christian side of it because it's the best time of the year to preach the gospel. Or they'll say Christmas is the best time. They'll say when there's a famine, uh, there's a major disaster, Okay, there's all these things where a certain period of time, they're saying that's the best time to preach the gospel. Now, first, before we really get into it, let's read about why we preach the gospel and are we commanded to preach the gospel. So, turn to 2 Corinthians 5.18. Okay. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. It said there that God has given us the word of reconciliation. King James Bible for English-speaking people, God's perfect written word. Verse 20, now we, then we are ambassadors for Christ. He's given us his word, and now we're the ambassadors for G We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is him saying, be ye reconciled to God. Now, it's things that you got to understand when it comes to being reconciled. Uh, one has to be an enemy first. At one time, I was an enemy of God. Then you're reconciled, and now I'm a friend of God. That's what reconciliation is. Okay, when you're lost, you're the enemy of God. When you get saved, you're reconciled through Jesus Christ. And we're to preach that. We're now ambassadors. Ambassadors go out to reconcile. Okay, to be goodwill, to bring, to try to do peace and stuff like that. We're supposed to reconcile people to Jesus Christ. Right? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6.15, this is talking about the whole armor of God, but we're going to talk about one of the parts of the armor of God. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What's an ambassador? He's supposed to be about peace. And he's supposed to go out and do his best to get peace between two people. That's what we're supposed to do. And notice there it says, shod with the preparation of Okay, the preparation means that you need to be prepared 
and this is giving it away, you need to be prepared to preach the gospel at any time, any day. Okay? Get some gospel tracts. Read the gospel. Type out your own gospel. Read it every so often. Get some verses memorized that's in your heart when it comes to the gospel. So when God opens a door, because God's the one that opens doors and closes doors, when he opens a door, you're ready to preach the gospel. Okay? 1 Corinthians 9, 5, 16. Okay? If you want to turn there, I'm just going to read it. For, thou, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Necessity, you need to be preaching the gospel. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And I'm not going to scream it, but there's an exclamation point there. That's how important it is. Okay, You need to be preaching the gospel. Uh, we read there that um, you need to be prepared to do it at any time. 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 25 but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Kind of jumped the gun when I said that. You need to get some verses memorized. When you preach the gospel, you don't just use your own words. You use God's words. Okay? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The video that I put before this. Okay? Now, um, one thing I didn't put in here and I forgot. Um, doors. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link. Um, Brother Brian did a great study on doors, uh, that Jesus is the one that opens doors and closes doors, okay? So part of that, um, so what day of the year is the best day to preach the gospel? Okay. Once again, some people say Christmas, some people say Easter, some say during famine, some during a catastrophe. Some people, so many people believe that there are certain times of the year, I'm not saying we all believe this. I know, brothers and sisters in Christ, you don't all believe this, but they believe that there's certain times of the year that there, since they're the best times of the year to preach the gospel, then that's really the only time of the year they're really active preaching the gospel. Well, Christmas is the best time to preach the gospel, so they're only really active during Christmas. Uh, Easter, like we said, oh, there's, there's a famine over here, so we're going to go over there and preach the gospel. I mean, we could have preached the gospel to them for years now, but we just ignored them. But now that there's a famine, we're going to go over and preach the gospel to them. Now, there might be you never had an opportunity to go over and preach the gospel to them. That's a different story. And then all of a sudden they have a famine and you're giving all this food as a relief and you're going over there to give them food. That's an open door. I understand that, but I'm talking about they only want to do it when there's a catastrophe or there's a famine, that's the only time they want to be really active for preaching the gospel. Other than that, they just keep to themselves. And they're not prepared to preach the gospel other than certain holidays. Um, and like I said, major disasters and famine and stuff like that. Okay. Who opens doors? Does man open doors? Does man's, men's traditions open doors? Right. Do holidays open doors? Doors might be open during holidays, okay? Doors might be open during traditions of men, but who opens those doors? God does. Who closes? Who can close those doors? Jesus, okay? Um, if you want to turn, the answer is best to find. I could have done this video in one verse, but I wanted to talk about why we preach the gospel. Okay, we're to reconcile the lost world to God, okay? We're, we're commanded to do that. God saved us. We want to see other people get saved. People we love. People we care about. Even people we don't even know. We want to see people get saved. Okay. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Going the wrong way. It's going to Colossians. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two. Okay. Uh, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. God's the one that opens doors. And in the day of salvation have I succured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You want to know all summed up, all wrapped up. You want to know the best time of the year? 
to preach the gospel today, you say, well, uh, I'm looking at the date. Are you saying the 11th of December, that's the best time of the year to preach the gospel? No, the best time of the year to preach the gospel is today. You're like, I don't get it. Well, ask me in a week. Guess what answer you're going to get? Today. Ask me in a month. Guess what answer you're going to get? Today. What is the best time of the year to preach the gospel? Today. Okay. Be prepared to preach the gospel today. Not tomorrow. Today. Be prepared. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I understand people get saved in all the different holidays. It's possible for people to get saved. I'm not saying it's impossible for anybody to get saved during Christmas. It's impossible for anybody to get saved during um, Easter. Now, on the flip side, I will say this. When I was a false convert, I see more false converts being created on holidays like Easter and Christmas than I do saved people actual Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women that God has changed their lives after salvation, evidence that they got saved. I've seen very few since I've gotten saved. God's the one that opens doors, okay? Can someone get saved in December? Right now... Sorry about that. <laughs> they can call back. Um... Now is the time, okay, we're in Christmas time, we're in December, now's the time to get saved, or get, yeah, now's the time to get saved, now's the time to preach the gospel, so yeah, you can say today, but when people get there and they go, well, Christmas is just the best time of the year to preach the gospel, that's why I celebrate Christmas and I, I do all these practices for Christmas, they're using it as an excuse, the whole point of this st short study that we've done is that today is the best time of the year to preach the gospel. Remember, God opens doors. God can close doors. Okay? I do not, honestly, I do not believe there's any best time of the year to preach the gospel. Definitely not Christmas, because like I said, I believe more false converts over the whole year period, more false converts are made on the in the month of December than saved. But remember, we rejoice over just one. If just one person got saved in December, praise the Lord. Absolutely praise the Lord. Today is the day you preach the gospel, not tomorrow. So hopefully this study, the short study and the short answer in its basic sense has helped you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Be prepared to preach the gospel today, not tomorrow. Thank you for watching.